Um, Last time we, we wrote Maxwell equations. In uh, manifestly covariant form, and the other one is just uh, then you go cyclic, right, o over these indices. So these are Maxwell. equations and uh, what is the advantage of writing these okay this is by components uh, and we saw some of the advantages is the compact way of writing uh, the entire machinery of the Maxwell equations and uh, just as an example uh, if you write the potential right the four potential so let, let's take C equal one because otherwise I I make a constant mistakes. Uh, you write the, the full potential, right? So this is an object that uh, uh, collects uh, the scalar potential, the vector potential, right? This one we use to derive the electric field. This one, the uh, magnetic fields, but uh, 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 and so we can collect them in a single object that has the correct transformations, okay? It's a, it's a four vector. When, when we put these together, it's not that we put apples uh, and uh, bananas. I mean, we, we take things that transform like the, co the, the coordinate, right? So th this one transforms like a, the time coordinate and this one like a, a spa space coordinate, okay? You, you put them together and they transform according to the Lorentz transformations the way we, we saw it. In fact, uh, uh, therefore, phi prime, if I do a, a, a boost, let, let's do a boost in the x direction, right? So this is a particular uh, Lorentz transformation in which I boost uh, my speed uh, in, in the x direction. Therefore, uh, uh, we know that they transform like, uh, like this. If, the, if, the, if this is a four vector, so the component, this, there you have the gamma factor. Now, I can, there is a C here, but since I took uh, C equal to one, so it, it becomes simple. And similarly, the X component of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the, uh, the X component of the vector, space vector part of this four vector, transform like, uh, like the X like the x component of the position, right? And why the other components? Uh, because uh, 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 it's a boost in the x direction. Remember that the components that are transverse to the boost uh, are left uh, are changed. So now you see that uh, uh, some of the results that we derive through computation by solving the Maxwell equations actually are purely kinematical. For instance, uh, if you uh, uh, were to derive the potentials, okay, the potentials, therefore the, the electric and magnetic fields, for, for a charge in, uh, in, in uniform motion. You remember, we did this uh, through a, a rather, uh, uh, we solved the Maxwell equations, and then we specialized that solution uh, to the case of a constant uh, uh, of the constant motion of your charge, right? But here, this seems to be something that we can solve just uh, by kinematics, because after all, uh, so let, let's say, let's see if I can do this. So I have my original uh, uh, set of axes, my Cartesian axis, uh, and, and then I, I, I boost, so I start moving in the x direction, so in this direction, with the constant speed, right? So you, your charge is here, and then you start moving with this. Uh, uh, so after time t, it is going to be here. So do you see that this is at rest, and then this starts moving. And, and you, as you, so this, this, this moves with a certain speed v. And you are sitting here, point p, and uh, what is the uh, potential? Uh, uh, for potential, but uh, what is the scalar potential and the vector potential that you see? 
uh, from uh, this charge, okay? But you see, so this is r, that is the distance with respect to the frame at rest, and let's call it r prime, the distance. But you see, then uh, you don't have to do uh, uh, any computation, really, because uh, all you have to do is, uh, okay, I write the, the potential, so the, in, in the frame that is moving with the charge, the potential is very simple, right? Let's call it phi prime, right? So let's decide that the prime, as I did here, is the frame, the Cartesian axis moving with the charge that is moving with a certain velocity v. So in that frame, it's obvious what the, the solution is, right? What, what is the solution? If you are sitting here at the point P and, and you are moving with the frame, then you see a charge that is at rest, right? And the charge at rest has a scalar potential that is what? Yeah, it's just that 1 over 4 pi epsilon, or let's forget about this, in this unit, uh, it's just, uh, and I have to put the r prime, right? Because it's the distance of the charge from my position in the frame prime, the prime. And what is the, the uh, i, a, uh, the vector potential? No, wait, I mean, this is the, vector potential of a charge that is at rest is zero. There is no vector potential. Right? But now, I, this is not the problem I was asked to solve, right? This is the problem of a charge at rest with respect to me, and it's just a Coulomb potential, okay? But uh, you see that uh, if you, I want to uh, know how this uh, uh, this, uh, what is the uh, uh, full potential for, uh, uh, for the same uh, charge that is now moving with respect to me, I just need to do this tra transformation, right? Because I boost myself to a different frame, right? And now the charge is not at rest any longer because it's, it's, uh, it's moving with speed v. So if I just uh, plug, you see, I can find phi, phi and ax, just by putting here phi prime and I, uh, a prime that I, I, I wrote there, and then I derive the potential uh, for uh, the charge moving uh, with constant speed, right? And in fact, you can see there, you just need inverse, right? So you just bring it on the other side. So phi uh, is going to be, so you, you should bring it on the other, it, it, it's phi prime, right? plus V A X, and then you have this gamma factor. Uh, prime. But this is zero, right? So it's just uh, one minus V square, this Q over R prime. And so you are almost there. Uh, the only problem is that you, you should write this R prime in the R, the unprime, coordinates, right, to be, because uh, you are in the unprime frame of reference. So uh, you have to, to rewrite this. So R prime, right, is the square root of X prime square plus Y prime square plus Z prime square. Now, Y and Z, nothing is going on because they are orthogonal to, the, to, to our boost. So the only one that is Lorentz boosted is the x prime. So here you should replace x prime with the x minus vp with the one minus v square. Why this? You can simply remove the prime because they are invariant under the boost because I decide to boost in that direction. So at the end of the day, you have q uh, so you have this uh, square root of 1 minus v squared. Then downstairs you have this big factor And obviously, uh, you can uh, easily derive also uh, the x component uh, of your uh, 
of your uh, um, vector potential because uh, that okay this this uh, we said uh, is simply zero right so you see it's just uh, v times right sorry this this is zero so this is just equal to the v phi so you just multiply by v so you you should be able to and the others are just zero so now you, you recognize this. These are the result of our computation of the linear vector potential in the case the charge moves with a constant speed. And you see that you have the two effects that are typical of the linear vector uh, potential, that you have the, this sort of, uh, of uh, uh, squeezing due to this uh, Lorentz contraction in a way. And here you have this uh, retarded time. Remember that potential is uh, like a Coulomb one, but at the retarded time. Because you see, this is exactly the retarded time. That, uh, you, you don't compute the potential from here, but at the retarded time, that is, uh, if this is x, uh, you know, x minus vt, the times. So that's kind of nice, I think, because it gives us, uh, uh, you see, in a purely kinematical way, we can understand uh, these uh, potentials, OK? So this is uh, only for potentials due to charges moving with constant speed, because as soon as they start accelerating, it's a completely different ball game, you understand? Because then you have radiation, so it's not a kinematical effect any longer, because you are accelerating. So there is no way that you can boost yourself to a frame in which uh, the charge is uh, it's a rest, because it keeps on changing speed. So uh, there is no such a boost. The problem becomes more complicated. Questions? So uh, how about, so this is the transformation laws for the potentials. How about the, the field strengths? We saw that this F alpha beta, this is called the field strengths, is a matrix, a 4 by 4 matrix, the component, anti-symmetric matrix, the component, the six independent components uh, of which are the three plus three components of the electric and the magnetic field. Uh, how do they transform under a, a Lorentz boost? So you see that they are not four vectors, so uh, they are not going to transform exactly like the coordinates as the potentials, uh, as we just uh, wrote for the potentials. Uh, it's a little more complicated, but not that much. And uh, it comes from the general, so it, this is a tensor, so a tensor transforms always transforms, by definition, transform like uh, this, 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 uh, this matrix here. So if you have a, a, a given tr transformation of your coordinates that sends you from the unprime to the prime coordinates, then uh, a vector transform like just a derivative like that then you get back uh, the one I wrote. The tensor, so you see it has two indices, so it transforms like uh, in a more complicated manner as two of these derivatives. So if you now, so this is always true. This is the definition of a tensor, if you want. A tensor, exactly as a vector, is an object that transforms in this way under a transformation of the coordinates. Then you specify what transformation of the coordinates. For us, these are boosts, are Lorentz transformations. So if you do that, uh, you can check, but I just write the, the results. Uh, again, I just take a boost in the x direction because uh, it's simpler. I don't, so that uh, I, f, I have, uh, but you see, because of this uh, more complicated, now it is the x direction that is left uh, unchanged. OK. And the other two that get uh, the boost. So F E prime. So this is the x component of the electric field, the y component. This gets this uh, uh, Lorentz contraction uh, effect plus the, so let me call it beta. This is V divided by C.
So this is the way the components of the electromagnetic field in, uh, uh, tensor transform. Those are the electric components. Remember, those are the components on the zero I uh, uh, row and column. And the B, uh, that are the other three independent components, similarly transforms in this way. Okay, so this is the equivalent of what I wrote before for the component of the coordinates or of the four vector, uh, four potential. You see, it's slightly different, but what, what is remarkable about this transformation? Why did I go through the trouble of writing them down? You see, you get, uh, you see, B and E gets mixed up. So when you do a boost, uh, is the electric field becomes a magnetic field and vice versa, right? You see, under a Lorentz transformation, What you so for, for an observer in the prime uh, uh, or unprime frames, uh, what uh, he she calls a, a, an electric field, uh, you would call it a B field, and vice versa. You see, they they, they don't have a, a independent existence as they did in the original Maxwell thing. Even though there we already sort of saw these things because uh, we we saw that uh, if you were transforming. And uh, if you had the variation in the electric field, right, a time variation in electric field would generate a, a B field. But here is it's deeper than that, right? It's just that if you change, if you move with a certain speed uh, given by beta, then you start seeing magnetic fields where before you only had the electric fields. So you see it's even deeper than the fact that uh, a time varying B or E fields generates a E and B field or vice versa. Uh, it's just that uh, what you call an electric field uh, and a magnetic field uh, is completely relative to your frame of reference. Okay, so that's what is very uh, interesting about this. Uh, the, about this. And uh, now I can just do the same so I can, uh, I can compute the electric and, and magnetic fields for a charge moving with constant speed. Of course, I could have done that uh, using the previous blackboard. By uh, I, I compute the potential, so by using the derivative of the potential, I could have. But I think it's, uh, it's more uh, instructive to do it uh, directly by using the E field. And I use the same trick as before, right? Uh, so let me. I use the same trick as before. And I draw two frames of references, one moving. So let's do it again. So I have my first one and then the other one that starts moving. Okay. So this is x. Uh, uh, so let's now do it. Uh, so this is x1 in this language, right? So this y should be x2. Uh, so I call this prime x2, x3 x3 prime, or maybe it should be the other way around anyway. So this is the frame k, and this is the frame k prime, OK? So this moves with the, and let's take now the point here. It's easier this way. So I take my, I, I'm sitting in p, so that I'm uh, at the origin in the x direction, OK? And, uh, and the charge, q, is sitting here and moving with this, uh, and you see, my position with respect to this uh, is identified by, let's call a, a, a unit vector that I call n. And uh, I will need this angle here that I call psi. And of course, this distance, when I start counting, is just vt. I start, it move, start from here, then you start moving with constant speed v, or beta, if you use that. And just the same as we did before, but for the, for, for the fields, OK? So what the position of point P, so let, let's do the, 
Is it for you or? Uh, I guess I need this. Well, so the point P. Wait, no, it's, it's Anshrask. Uh, who, who's there? So the, the position of the point P, right, uh, uh, in the K prime frame, uh, you see that uh, uh, the X, this position is minus VT prime, right, when I start measuring. So I don't know, X1 prime, so the position, as measured in this frame, the K prime, the, the frame of reference uh, which is moving, uh, is minus... Uh, Vt prime, right? Is the amount that you have moved. And uh, x2 prime, so le let's give it a name, b is the distance from, from here to up there. Now b is b, is b prime, because uh, remember this is the, the direction transverse to the boost. So, so this is the moving frame, and this is the frame at rest. And uh, x3, uh, x3 is, uh, well, I pick it that on, on the x, x2, so this is just 0. So this is the position of uh, the point, the observer point, in the, uh, with respect, uh, using the coordinates of the moving frame k, k prime, OK? So what is the uh, electric field? The electric field here, so let, let's just uh, compute the electric field uh, here, but uh, as seen by the k prime, so the moving, exactly as before. I, I ride along this charge, right, very happily with constant speed in that direction, and I want, and I, so again, what is the electric field? It's just uh, as before, is the electric field, uh, uh, is, the, is the Coulomb field. So A, E, uh, so now E, uh, one, I guess, in this language, E1 prime, so in the moving frame prime, is just, uh, let's say, minus Q. Uh, how should I write this? Uh, 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 so it's uh, 1, it's Q divided by R squared, right? So, but let's write it uh, uh, with the components, right? Because, uh, uh, so uh, it's Q X1 prime divided R prime uh, cube. Right? But what is x, you see, x1 prime is just, uh, is just that, right? So let's, uh, let's write it like this. q over r squared, I write it like this. So this is minus q vt prime uh, r prime. And remember that r prime, r prime is b squared by using Pythagoras theorem is b, is b prime, but b prime is equal to, to uh, p and v p prime square. So this is goes down here. Similarly, similarly, uh, a e two e two uh, prime is q x two, right? x2, so b, divided by this r. And e3 prime, it will be q, r, q over r prime cube, but times the, uh, the third component, uh, so this is 0. And what is b prime? Again, I have b prime. 1, b prime 2, b prime 3. These are all equal to 0, right? We, we know that because for us, this is, for us, this is just a, a charge at rest. So exactly as before, now I, I just write this. Uh, uh, I just write this in the, in the, in, in the original frame in the unprimed frame by using these transformations, OK?
Um, maybe you, you, you may wonder what is t prime with respect to, to t, right? Uh, you see that uh, uh, because I, I, I have the two starting out at the same point, uh, I just have the, 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 the Lorentz uh, gamma factor, okay, in the transformation. So if you want, you can rewrite this now. Well, okay. Whatever. You see, now by using this, you can rewrite this using the unprime coordinate. Uh, let's do just the transformation. So now, if uh, so, I guess this is a one, two, and three. So you see that the e. One right uh, is equal to e one prime. So here I should put one, two, and so on. And e one prime is that thing that I wrote there. That now I I can write uh, uh, so minus q v t prime. I decided to to call it. Uh, to, uh, so I, I want to write everything in the unprime at rest frame. So minus QV, gamma T, and then downstairs I rewrite this R. Well, but it's a Q, so I, I write it like this. It's B square plus gamma square, V square, T square, three and a half. Hmm? And similarly, I, 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 I go on, uh, I have E2. E2 is just, uh, E2, you see, E2 is this. So it's the E2 prime with this gamma factor. And, uh, and uh, hmm? so uh, I write it here. E2 is equal gamma E2 prime, right? Uh, E2. So I guess I, 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 I no, because I started with the prime minus gamma Q B and downstairs B square plus gamma square B square T square three and a half. Why E3 is just zero, right? Because uh, of the, because E3 prime is zero, and then the B is zero, so you end up with uh, just a zero there. So how does it look? Uh, ah, uh, so these are the three components of the electric field. Now the B field is generated, actually you generate a, a, a three component of the B field that is just gamma, beta, uh, E2 prime, that is, is just beta E2. Yeah. On the E2 prime part. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering about the same. If I wrote it in this direction or the other. Uh, huh? Yeah, I think I'm using the, the other one, like this one. Because I want to transform back. So then you get this gamma. And in fact, this then you get the B3, that is uh, this. Is. Uh, where? This is a plus, yes. Thank you. OK, so you get also the magnetic field through the same transformation. But let's just stop for a second uh, uh, to look at the shape of this uh, electric field. And of course, you, you remember, well, that, that I already, so I use that. So I can. Uh, you see, to sh uh, you remember the results, right? The, the, the field is like a, 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 a Coulomb field, but it gets squeezed 
in, in, uh, and, and shrank uh, in the direction of motion and stronger perpendicularly. And this you see by, by projection, right? Because uh, you see that uh, this, uh, this thing here, this is R square, right? R, R, prime, R, R, R prime square, right, uh, was, uh, uh, was this gamma x square plus y square plus z square, right, in general coordinates. And this you can write as gamma, gamma square r square minus gamma square minus 1 y z square, right? This is the, the, the relation between r, that is the distance, this distance, uh, in one frame and in the other frame. So w all I want to say is that, uh, uh, so this is gamma squared, R square, then you can collect this, you see, and you get minus, uh, uh, what is this? This is the angle, you see, is the, is the sign of this angle, right, when you collect that. So you have this beta square, uh, the sign of uh, uh, psi square. You see, you see, this is the project, why, this is the projection along those axes of R. Right? Well, actually, uh, against the other direction. So you get the sign of that angle. So in other words, downstairs here, you can do the same. And this becomes, uh, well, this is minus there. So this was R prime. So I replace uh, uh, with that, I get minus Q. Uh, v gamma t divided by so gamma cube r cube one mass so beta square that is v square uh, divided by c square but forget it three and a half and the same up here gamma q p divided by the same factor. I like beta, beta more. So you have two components, so you, if you pull them together, you get the, the vector relation. So the vector E is QR pointing in the R direction. Uh, uh, R cube, gamma, you see, you have a gamma here, gamma here, gamma here, gamma there. So you have a gamma square. Then the, this VTB, they reconstruct the R vector, you see, because these are the components. R is this, so this is the X2 component, and this is the X1 component. So I can write this as the position R. And you get, so you get this contraction, gamma square, but uh, uh, on top, you get this uh, sine square of psi. So you see that uh, 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 what happened. You have a, a, a depend. This field uh, is not uh, uh, symmetric as it is in the frame in which the charges are rest. But it gets a dependence on this psi. And how is this dependence? Well, if this angle is such that sine of psi uh, is equal to 0, Right, you see that this field uh, goes like, uh, so e, the E field, the, the intensity of the E field goes like QR square, QR square, because this R, no? Gamma square, okay? If uh, in the opposite limit, uh, when the, the, the sine of your angle is one, right, you see? Then, uh, actually, you see, if this is 1, this simplify, you see, is it, it, like a, a gamma 3 and a half upstairs. So uh, uh, the, then the, the E field goes like Q gamma divided by this R square. So these are the two, the two possibilities, the two directions. Then you see that uh, when you boost, you keep on boosting now. So beta goes to, to 1, and gamma, uh, gamma goes to, <coughs> to 
infinity. So gamma goes to infinity, then this goes to zero. Gamma goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. So what happens is uh, what we draw, well, I don't remember if I, if I did it, but uh, uh, the electric field right, starts out as a symmetry if these are the, if you are at rest, right, these are the, the force lines of this field. But you see that the, and, and the density of these lines is proportional to the intensity of your electric field by convention. Then you start moving in direction, direction V. Then you see that in the direction of the motion, in the direction of the motion, right, you see that the field uh, becomes weaker and weaker, right? So here it gets depleted. Uh, on the contrary, in the other direction, this direction perpendicular to the motion, it becomes stronger and stronger. In fact, it diverges as you get closer to the speed of light. So this field becomes something like this. All concentrate, this is the V, this is your charge, and the field becomes, and not, no fields here, all the fields in this cone. And ideally, if you take the limit, it becomes a shock wave. Right? No, like uh, on the ocean, the shock wave. And so this is, uh, we, we already saw that uh, in the original very long computation that probably you have a, forgot by now, but uh, now we rederive that again just by, by kinematics. It's because you are boosting that a field that look like this becomes like that. So if you, uh, okay. if you come running very fast toward a stationary charge, you won't see the Coulomb field. You will see this like shock-like field. It is like a wall. So a photon coming to there, that's what, is, what the photon, well, it's too small to have eyes, but would see. Okay, so that was to convince you that uh, uh, this four-dimensional uh, space-time uh, uh, way of writing the, the Maxwell equation is somewhat what, uh, useful, uh, besides being very elegant. Uh, and now we, 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 we well, uh, is there any questions about this? I hope by now you, you are familiar with this uh, field. Uh, well, so just retain this as a message, uh, the way you see uh, the field. Uh, this is the linear vector potential or uh, uh, electric field. Uh, in the case, the charge is moving with constant speed. This, this is the best way to, to, to derive it. Yes. Rotating, yes. but rotating is uh, is not inertial, right? Yeah. So there you have an acceleration. If you start rotating, you start seeing radiation, right? So this is only, as I said at the beginning, this is the kinematics of. Uh, so that it's a purely kinematical effect. It's just because I'm looking at the same system in two uh, uh, in two different frames of reference. That's why I call it a kinematic effect. There is no dynamics. There are no forces here. So if you start accelerating, it's a different story. Because the air in general, if you accelerate, I mean, if you, it's like in mechanics, right? If you start going around, then you start worrying about uh, 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 this uh, Coriolis and the centrifugal forces. I mean, you cannot mimic that through a transformation. For a charge that no, is moved. Uh, no, this is Lorentz, but I'm thinking. Uh, this is the Lorentz transformation. The message here is, I guess, that uh, you can rederive these fields just by changing uh, through a, a Lorentz transformation. So there is no dynamics there in, in those computations that we did. We solved the Maxwell equations, but it was just the effect that we were looking at the system uh, in a different, from a different frame. frame or yes, but what, what is the characteristic of the, the frame? 
that it moves with constant speed. So, so it has zero acceleration. That's, that's, uh, that's that, that on, uh, yes, yes. That's the definition of inertial frame of reference. It, it, every, in fact, what is hard is to understand the Galilean stuff. <coughs> Once you have understood that, uh, the only information you need is that instead of doing a Galilean transformation, you do a Lorentz transformation. That's the only new ingredient that uh, Einstein is asking you to apply. But for me, uh, I think for, for, for the students, what is difficult is to understand the, the inertial stuff, the fact that the physics is the same for all frames moving with constant speed. Once you believe, you buy that, then uh, you are done. Because then is a detail if whether x prime goes to x minus vt and that's the empty prime goes to t, or you also have some stuff here, and then it's the Lorentz boost. Forget about the gammas and all that stuff. Is that clear? So once you, you, you understand that the observers moving with the constant speed with respect to, to one another, they, they, they see the same physics, and they only have to transform their coordinates, as I did here on the blackboard, from one frame to the other, then uh, it's just a technical detail that you should transform using the Lorentz transformations rather than the Galilean one. But conceptually, the, the, the idea is that. Is that uh, answering 10% of your questions? <laughs> what, what, what factor uh, are going to change if the observer will hold the truth? Oh, I don't care. I mean, as long as our relative velocity is constant. I don't know if you, if the point is that I don't know whether you are at rest or you're moving. That's the, the main point of the invite. I have no idea if you, are you moving or at rest? I don't know. I cannot tell by using uh, this, uh, this physics. I mean, all those examples in the books uh, about the guy on the train moving on the ship, right? They are exactly this. If I close you in, in, in a train, and you don't know whether the train is moving or not. Because if you drop this, it will drop also in the train, right? It's not that we, we, we did that exercise. Even for the Earth, in fact, the effect is very, it, it goes in the opposite direction. Yeah? But there, because it's not an inertial frame, but. If it's an inertial frame, there, are no, there is no experiment inside a closed room to decide whether you are at rest or moving. In fact, it doesn't make sense. It's one of those questions that you are not allowed to ask. If you start accelerating, then it's a different thing. Because acceleration, in a way, you know, if, if the room starts accelerating, you know immediately. Because you start bumping, it's like the bus number what <laughs> coming here, right? <laughs> But they are, uh, it becomes a different. But they are, the, the generalization of that idea is that you don't know whether you are accelerating or you are in a gravitational field. You see, that's the next, uh, <laughs> the next step. OK. Good. So now I want to, uh, in fact, go back to our knowledge about mechanics and uh, write down the Lagrangian that gives us these equations, right? Because that uh, is the final point that I want to uh, teach you. Because after all, I mean, we, we learn all the stuff about Lagrangian, so it cannot apply only to springs and particles. And uh, so, uh, you see, we have a, a little bit of a problem here, but uh, in fact, I'm not sure I will be able to, uh, because we have two problems. First is that uh, the Lagrangians that we wrote up to now, uh, they were not uh, covariants. So in fact, they, they, were, they were not written in this language. In fact, we have to learn how to write a Lagrangian that is uh, invariant, right, under Lorentz transformation. So that's the first problem. And the second problem is that uh, we never apply this Lagrangian stuff to a, a, a system that had an infinite number of degrees of freedom. Because you understand that an electromagnetic field has an infinite number of degrees of freedom. So it's, a, it's not the garden variety of a physical system that, uh, you know, I always put this uh, QI 
for the, our generalized coordinates, but clearly here we don't have a, 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 even if I had an infinite number of these, here we, it's, it's worse because it's a field, so it's a continuum, so it's not a numerable infinity, it's a higher order infinity, right? Because it's, a, it's a, you know, the, dif the difference between the number, I don't know, of, of uh, natural numbers, those are infinite, clearly, but they are much less than the num na the of uh, real numbers. You, you learned that, right? Did you? You know that, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I cannot. I mean, they are taping, so I cannot. <laughs> I mean, this is a higher order infinity than this one, right? And here is the same problem. We, we discuss a number of degrees of freedom, never an infinite number, but in principle we, we could. But we always thought that, they, that we could map them into the... Uh, set of the natural numbers, but a field cannot be mapped. It's a continuous function. It's, a, it's, a, it's the power of the continuum, so, okay? So we have to generalize also that, but probably that is not going to be very hard because we sort of know that uh, as long as there are no mathematicians in the room, we can replace the sum of, with an integral, and that will do the trick. So let's uh, try to begin this. So my first problem is what is the action? You remember the action is the uh, right. The action is the integral of the Lagrangian uh, over time. But already here you see a problem because what is time here? Now time is a, is a just a component of a of a four vector, so we cannot use that because the the action must be a scalar, but it should be a four dimensional scalar, not a three dimensional scalar. It should be invariant. So by invariant, the uh, Lorentz boost. So one thing do we, that uh, we know that is an invariant on the Lorentz boost is the, is the distance, the four-dimensional distance that I call delta s. So I guess uh, the get the, it, it must be proportional. I put the minus for some reason but, uh, to an integral over a distance, a distance ds uh, in this... Uh, in the full dimension, okay? And by definition, the action is the integral from T1 and T2 of the Lagrangian, okay? So you see that uh, uh, by, by looking, you see what is ds is C, the, the tau, right? Is, uh, is uh, C times the proper time of the particle. So here is just a single particle. So if I measure the distance on the path of this particle, right, then I have uh, something that is uh, the proper time, that is parameterized in the motion of the particle. And, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, okay. What? Ah, here. No, but let's see, let, uh, this minus sign, uh, I don't even remember where I put it. This? No, the, yeah. Ah, the, it, it depends on the signature. So I guess I use the other signature here. So let me keep this signature for a second. So all, all I, I, I want to say is the d tau, right, is, uh, is uh, what is the relation between d tau, d tau and dt? You remember, it's just a gamma factor, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's dt. 1 minus this v square over c square. So then uh, if you replace in here and then you compare, you see that the Lagrangian should be this minus alpha um, c 1 minus v square over c square. So that seems to be the, uh, the, the Lagrangian for a free particle by using this argument uh, that uh, my action should be an invariant, so it must be some integral over the proper time, then I connect the proper time to the, uh, what we call time, uh, and then I use the usual definition of the Lagrangian to be that object that integrated over the ordinary time gives me the action. 
What is alpha? Well, this, so uh, of course, this is an argument about invariance, so we cannot fix the absolute value of this quantity. But that comes from uh, uh, looking at what is p, right? Because I know that p, whatever I, I'm doing, must be the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the x dot, right? The q dot that, that uh, I can call the v, the velocity. So, uh, no, right, this is a V. So I take the derivative of my Lagrangian and I get alpha V. So that's why there was this minus, I guess. Alpha um, V, right? And then uh, you get this downstairs. Hmm? And uh, then if I look at the, what the, well, now already sort of know what alpha is, but just to, 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 to convince myself, let's write the energy now. So the energy is, you remember, the energy is the Hamiltonian. This is a single particle, one degree of freedom, so is the, is P dot, uh, P times the, the Q dot, so P dot V. So you see P, is this dot v, so I get uh, oh, look, 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 yeah. pull out the c. Okay. So then you have c squared minus v squared. No? Okay. Okay. I pull out. Minus alpha, c square minus v square. If I differentiate this, c square, what? Minus 2v, c square minus v square. If I want it to this form, I get So you say there's still a c. So let me just see, because here I get alpha c square. Alpha C square plus alpha V square. Anyway, uh, you see that from here that alpha must be the mass, the rest mass of the, of the particle, OK? <laughs> and uh, oh, OK. It's, Well, no, but because I know that uh, I know that the Lagrangian is minus m c. So I guess uh, maybe this is not correct, right? So that would be what alpha. Uh, I get a c here. So maybe this is okay because then uh, I get. Uh, I don't get to see. Okay, I'll check it and I'll, and I'll let you know. Uh, anyway, you see that this is still not uh, what we wanted, even if I if if even if I had got the the C right. Um, and. Uh, Uh, you see that I can write this. So what I want to say is that uh, if you write it the, in here, you see that the Lagrangian is just this, right? The if you so sorry. This is the Lagrangian, but uh, if I insist on writing the Lagrangian by using the, the proper time, right, not measure using t, then I get this Lagrangian. Then I have the, the, the four 
uh, dimensional Lagrangian, so to speak, that is just going to be mc divided by gamma, then the square root of, uh, I don't know, the four velocity, I call it u, I think, right? And if you take uh, minus, if you take the, the, the invariant uh, frame, you see, this is the, the way you write that Lagrangian in an invariant form, right? Do you see? Well, it doesn't matter, but uh, it doesn't matter. No, but they are the same. It's just that I rewrote. You see that uh, the gamma is this factor here, right? One over gamma is this factor here. Then here we, we said it is, it's the mass, so this is the mc. Then it's just a matter of, uh, 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 right, this is just uh, c squared. So this is just mc squared divided by gamma. That is exactly what you have there. So they are the same, but uh, uh, I rewrote them uh, uh, by introducing the, uh, the four vectors, because now I can take uh, the derivative with respect to that and the coordinate and produce the Lagrangian equation, OK? In a, if, in a, a four-dimensional invariant formalism. But uh, you are correct. So these two are equivalent. But uh, it's correct that uh, the Lagrangian is not unique, uh, as you know. Uh, and in fact, you can write other forms of the Lagrangians. But uh, 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 for instance, without the square root, it's still OK. You still derive the same uh, Maxwell equation. But this, you see, allows you to write the so minus mc, so the action. Then uh, you write everything using the proper time. So this is the Lagrangian written in this form, right? And you see the, uh, the, uh, the nice thing about this is that uh, I can write this factor now, uh, this, this factor here, I can write it as uh, minus mc uh, uh, using the coordinates, right? Because this is uh, dx alpha d tau, so dx alpha d tau. Right, so you see that uh, I can uh, just have uh, here the I can uh, the d tau simplify, and I get the the, uh, the the square root of the dx. So this is minus m c um, I can pull out this and do with the with the like. Say this is the scalar product, so I write the matrix maybe eta alpha beta dx alpha dx beta, right? So this is nice because you see this is just the ds, is the distance in this space. Remember this is the 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 Minkowski matrix, right? But uh, actually this is good for any matrix. You you could replace here a generic matrix, and this would be the action for a free particle on that matrix. This is, in a, in, a, in a way, is the idea of general relativity, right? That you study the motion of the particle in a generic metric. But let's stick to, to, to the Minkowski metric. And you see that uh, when you write the, 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 if you do the Lagrangian equations of here, you get immediately the result that, uh, what? That uh, the second derivative of your coordinate with respect to the proper time, they must vanish. But this is Newton, uh, is Newton equation, right? The acceleration is equal to zero for a free particle, obviously. <coughs> so this was just uh, to, to translate into this language the, the Lagrangian. But really, I want to write now the Lagrangian for a charged particle. So this was a. A, a, a point particle, free point particle, how does it couple to the electromagnetic fields? It's a, it's a term that I have to add uh, to the Lagrangian, either in this form or uh, in the other form. And uh, then you have to remember that uh, the, the, uh, you see the, the, the acceleration that what we wrote uh, the other time, that the acceleration of, uh, of, a, of a charged particle 
right? Uh, the Lorentz force uh, can be written uh, in this form here, right? F alpha beta u beta. Right, this, this, this I showed you uh, last week uh, uh, that this is equivalent to the, the, the Lorentz force, so dt equal e, uh, e plus uh, the u cross b c in this unit, and uh, dE dt equal e u dot v. Right? Lorentz force in this language is not only the Lorentz force, it's also the, uh, the, the energy, the power produced uh, by this interaction. So these two are written uh, in this form. And uh, uh, we are this, uh, okay. So you see that uh, if you want to produce these equations, you have to introduce a further term into the uh, Lagrangian. I see now, this C, let's see. So I think that, yeah, there is a C square because now I see that the next page I, I wrote the Lagrangian like this. So does that work now? Okay, so good. And you want to add this uh, uh, interaction, so now without uh, uh, spending more time, I just write this result. If you add a term like this, u alpha a alpha, so this is the interaction, okay? You see the four velocity times the four uh, potential that uh, when you do the Lagrangian equation is going to give you this Lorentz force. And what is this in... Uh, in three-dimensional language, you see that, remember that uh, the component, this was phi and the vector potential, so you get minus E phi plus E over C U dot A. So this is 4D, and this is in 3D. So if you want, if you want to stick to the 3D, that uh, you use this uh, U vector, uh, then this is the Lagrangian. So this is for the free particle, and this is for the particle interacting with the uh, scalar and vector potential. This can be grouped together by this uh, invariant term, but then here you write it, as I wrote it before, as the square root of minus. It doesn't matter. So either, so maybe I should write it. So this, you could write it also minus mc, gamma square root of minus u alpha u alpha, right? So if you do the Lagrangian equation that I don't want to do, but uh, you get, as before, the, uh, the acceleration using the proper time, uh, is, uh, you get it here, but instead of being equal to zero, is equal to EC, then you see you take the derivative uh, of that alpha, so you get d alpha d beta minus d beta a alpha times the velocity. And if you remember the definition, this is f alpha, f alpha beta. So you see you get exactly the Lorentz. So this is the Lorentz force in 4D. So I guess force is not cross. In 4D is not. There is an interesting, so that, that would, uh, that would. Uh, so now you know how to write the Lagrangian for a charged particle. And uh, by taking the Lagrangian equations, you get back uh, Lorentz force, okay? And there is an interesting observation to, to be made here that uh, if you write the momentum conjugated, the momentum conjugated uh, uh, here, right? So this is uh, uh, dL d, dx uh, alpha d tau or ds. If you do that, uh, okay, you see 
you see that uh, you get the usual term, the m u alpha. This is what uh, is the usual four momentum, right, that comes from the four velocity. You just multiply by the mass. But uh, you see, you have a, a, so this is the u alpha, right? So you have a u alpha also here. So you get an extra term. So the momentum is not just the mass uh, multiplied by the velocity of the particle. You get an extra e over c a alpha. So you see, this is a situation in which the conjugate momentum is more complicated. OK. And therefore, so you see the, the vector, the, the, the four potential, but also the vector potential, if you decompose this uh, uh, in, the, in three dimensions, is like a component of the momentum. So a, a particle in an electromagnetic field, a charged particle, gets a momentum that has a component that is proportional, a, a component of your momentum is proportional to the, to the vector potential. Hmm? Uh, and now you can write the Hamiltonian because you know the four momentum, so you can go from the Lagrangian formalism to the Hamiltonian formalism, if, if you still remember this, this thing. And you see that the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian is just the, the, the P square over 2M, but the only thing you have to be careful is that the P is now this. So in other words, the Hamiltonian is 1 over 2M, P alpha minus this A over C alpha times P alpha minus A C alpha. So this is the P square. And you have to subtract the, the, the rest energy of the particle usually for the Hamiltonian, but it doesn't matter. I mean, in this way, you, you have a nice limit of the energy into the non-relativistic limit. Otherwise, you get always this uh, extra mc square that, uh, that is there, but. Uh, uh, because uh, I think that's what uh, gives you zero, but uh, after the embarrassing of the C, I, I'm not sure. Uh, and then I, you can write, I wrote the Lagrangian equation, so now I write the, the Hamilton equations. Well, one, as usual, the first one is just the definition of P, P alpha, right? And the other one is the one equivalent to the to Newton law. And uh, if I'm correct, it should be this. In fact, I have an index that is wrong here. <coughs> So this uh, should be, I don't know, gamma. So this is, this, this is the F alpha gamma, uh, like this, right? OK. There are two strange things uh, about the, the, you see, the first is that the Hamiltonian, uh, it's, a it's a Lorentz scalar, right, in this, uh, that's a bit odd because E, the energy, is not a scalar, right, in this language, is the time component of, of something. So here you lose this connection between the energy and Hamiltonian that is so nice and natural in the usual thing. Moreover, on the mass shell, as he said, on, on the equation of motion, the Hamiltonian so defined always vanishes. Relativistic Hamiltonians are always equal to zero if you put the solution. So that's too, it's a bit uh, odd and uh, frankly, I'm not, uh, I don't want to, to comment on that. Questions? So at least we fix this C, right? And uh, so now I only le I have left to to 
very quickly, because it's a little bit uh, beyond, uh, to write the Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field. You see here I wrote the, I wrote the Lagrangian that, that gives rise to Lorentz force, but this is only, yes, I will. Uh, about Einstein. I don't know. About? Einstein. Ah? Albert Einstein. Einstein. Ah. Einstein. Uh, well, I, I mentioned. What, what do you want to hear about? No, I want just to listen about him. Because that's just Lorenz. <laughs> ah, you, you feel that uh, I'm unfair with. Uh, no, I, I said that. Uh, no, maybe just a little bit. But what? I mean, I don't know what to. This relativity, I think Einstein is the father of relativity. Yeah. But I, I, here is a very practical approach, you see. I, I, uh, my idea was that uh, I, I was teaching you the electromagnetic field. And then uh, you, you look at the transformation laws of the electromagnetic field and you discover that they are invariant under Lorentz. They are covariant under Lorentz transformation. That's all you need uh, of relativity here. But it, everything is in there because uh, you have that uh, velocity, you see. Relativity what is just the fact that you have uh, invariance under this, uh, you know, that all observer moving with the same, uh, with constant speed with respect to each other have the same laws, right? And then you connect them by Lorentz transformation. So I have told you everything. What else is there? W what are you thinking? I mean, there is no more of that. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's very important, but from the point of view of the machinery is just uh, now, now here is included in the machinery. The machinery already works for you. You don't have to think every time what did Einstein say. <laughs> you just use the four vectors, and, and then uh, 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 you are sure that uh, everything you write is covariant under uh, the transformation. No, but uh, uh, otherwise, t what what do you have in mind? I'm not sure what you want to. I mean, the rest is just you know the. The story, how he got the idea, no, but maybe that. Maybe no, not the story, but because we have just the name of uh, uh, Lorenz. Uh, because I know the, the father of But relativity uh, is the invariance of your system and the Lorentz yes, transformation, yes. period. Ah, okay, 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 okay. The rest is just um, <laughs> advertisement. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> just. Uh, you, 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 you must be sure that uh, your system is, as before in mechanics, we had to be sure that uh, the system was uh, invariant and the transformation from frames moving with constant speed, right? This was guaranteed by the fact that the force was equal to the acceleration, not the velocity. Here is the same. I mean, uh, once you have uh, put this into, into, into your formalism, then uh, you don't have to worry. I mean, uh, that's good because you don't have constantly to worry what, uh, what is correct or not. It's built in, in the formalism. If you write the Lagrangian in this form, I mean, the physics is automatically uh, uh, invariant under th this transformation. Well, invariant. They covariantly transform under that. They, they, they remain in form under this transformation. As I said, you don't have to worry about, you know, we, we, we discussed a little bit about this twin stuff, and, uh, but uh, really, in the everyday life, you don't have to worry about those. It, it, everything is fine, and uh, you stick to this formalism, and uh, you, you, you never be wrong. Is that uh, satisfactory? <laughs> I mean, the rest is, uh, you know, is the history of physics. Uh, you can uh, have a class on that, how Einstein came up with this idea, or...